Hi, this is uh, Dr. Merzion, and I'll be presenting to you uh, what we call the cone beam implant planning. Uh, we've had pretty great success in the last uh, few decades with placing implants to replace missing teeth, but one serious limitation we always had was to be very wary of uh, where we place the implant. As you can tell, even a non-dentist can tell how closely this implant was placed in this patient's mouth over 10 years ago. That implant is too close to the tooth in front of it, and lucky for this patient, it did not do any harm or damage the tooth or cause any tooth loss for what's positioned in front of the implant. Furthermore, there's a nerve that uh, travels underneath the implant, and it took a lot of meticulous care uh, to properly place these or to avoid any kind of uh, uh, compromise situations. Well, with the cone beam technology, which is similar to what you might recognize as uh, CAT scan technology that you've heard in the hospital setting, now we can get cross-sectional views of what we're doing. So initially in the top left corner, what you're seeing is a two-dimensional view of a patient's jaw with missing teeth. Now with the cone beam technology, we can focus in the area where the tooth is missing and line up properly, and now we can position our finders here exactly to where we want it, and we can uh, get cross-sectional reads of exactly how tall and how wide the bone is. So when we place implants, it's really imperative that you have enough uh, bone thickness and bone height so that we can bury the largest diameter and the tallest implant we possibly can. The larger the diameter, the longer the implant, the better the prognosis is for success. So we're always trying to get the largest one, and sometimes we simply don't have enough space. In fact, when you lose a tooth, you start losing the bone that used to hold the tooth in place, and over time it gets so compromised you no longer have enough bone, and then we've got to take more dramatic measures to uh, place uh, the implants by grafting bone to that area. So here you see the bone height was 22 millimeters. That is a very good amount of bone thickness, or height I should say, and here we are with this uh, 3D software. We're going to be planning uh, where to place this implant. So we pick, a, we pick an appropriate size and I can literally place it exactly where I want and then properly orient it and so uh, it's properly placed within the bone. We can't have the implant perforating into the sinus which is above the bone or we can't have it placed so that most of it is in bone and a piece of it actually uh, passes the bone. It has to be all completely embedded in the bone otherwise it gets infected or there's many other complications. So here I increase the length. It looks like I can get a 13 millimeter implant into this space and I'm literally very delicately planning uh, where everything should be. I also just turned off a feature that gives me a uh, a buffer zone for extra added protection because we simply can't have the implant be outside the bone or rotate it so that it actually perforates or pierces through bone as you can see in this image here. So uh, it's, gr it's an incredible advantage that we have with this cone beam technology where we can properly place the implant exactly where we want the bone. Here you can see three different slices or cross sections and the axial view which I'm uh, um, I'm manipulating right now, I can move up and down the bone level and see exactly where the implant is placed and I can move it fractions of a millimeter uh, to exactly where I want, right in the middle of the bone, making sure that uh, it's properly placed and away from uh, serious anatomical structures like adjacent teeth or here's a sinus. We simply can't have the implant uh, penetrate the sinus. That dark area that you saw was a sinus. So we have complete control over where we want the implant placed, and this gives us a tremendous advantage and uh, opportunity for success placing in the appropriate area. Um, this is an opportunity we were not afforded before. In, in the past, we'd have to uh, design this off two-dimensional images or get CAT scan slices and uh, manually uh, plot where we want the uh, implant to be, but here we can uh, place it exactly where we want with the software and the digital information that we have, and then properly produce all the laboratory components to deliver this implant in the proper position.